Welcome to my last segment of interviews. My name is Matt Presti, former president of the University of Science and Philosophy. I'm here with Mr. John Bonzel, the incoming and new president of the USP. Hello, John. How are you today? I'm fine, man. Thank you, buddy. Good, Good to, to be here, you, man. Matt. Yes, sir. Welcome See aboard. You. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, John, why don't you give us just a little bit of background um, on your involvement with the university? Ooh, I got to go back in time a little bit, Matthew. Uh, it is the summer of 1975, mm -hmm. and my cousin Jim Porter introduced me to the home study course, and from that moment on, um, I, was, I was hooked. I guess it's fair to say I'm a lifetime student, so that's 40-some 40, 40 years ago, 46 years ago, and that led to me coming to Virginia and living at the palace with Leo Russell in uh, January 10th, 1976, until uh, October of 77. Hmm. Okay. And uh, so I have been involved with the university pretty much all my life. It, is a, uh, it has been a priority in my life. Mm -hmm. And for me to reach this position at this time, um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Good. I thought maybe someday it would be a possibility. You know, I never really... Um, thought it would happen, but mm -hmm. it has, and uh, and I'm just so excited to be here and to to represent this university officially, and and to try to bring um, whatever talents and things that I, I need to, to to move us forward. Excellent. Yes. Well, you definitely, John brings an acumen of business that is needed at this juncture in the unrolling of the new business model, which we executed. Uh, officially uh, on July 4th of 2019, sort of a, a rebirth, and then the official grand opening was, a reopening I should say, was November 1st of 2019, and uh, during that grand reopening I presented you, sir, with a plaque honoring you as our Ooh. lead volunteer of the year. Yes. For the university. And uh, when you have somebody helping you hang over 450 pictures and set up sculptures and and do things like this and and uh, mm. the theater room, you know, and not ask for a dime. And he's actually working more than the staff that was hired to work at that time. So uh, you were well deserving of that. What, what do you think reflecting on that experience of that uh, massive move and the the massive setup and all that it took? Well, you know, when I looked back and knew that that artwork had been in storage for 20 years approximately, right? Yep, I believe. Maybe a little over. And it was like, no, we can't. We can't have this. We cannot have this message boxed up <laughs> in a warehouse sitting and waiting for somebody to do something. And uh, so when you began your presidency and um, you brought your expertise to the table, and I know uh, yourself, uh, me, Jim Porter, and some other uh, longtime students, Richard Walker. Mm -hmm. We put our heads together and said, come on, let's get this thing out of here. And so you, you spearheaded it, brother, and uh, we got it done. It was a labor of love, mm -hmm. but boy, it was a project. I remember uh, Gary Scroggum, the owner of the warehouse we rented from, asked me, how many days do you think until you'll have this done? I said nine days. He goes, huh, you'll need 30 at least. And what did we do it in? Nine days, I believe. We did it in 11, Seven, but 11. we took two days off. There you so. go. Now, see, that's Russell students working together right there. Ah. You know, we did, I think, in one day we did three loads. Well, several days we did three loads. Uh, in each of those vehicles. And if anybody wants to see a little more on that, you can just type in at philosophy.org rebirth of the Russell legacy in the search bar or rebirth of the Russell legacy over at the YouTube channel. Check that out. It's about a half hour long documentary that uh, documents and, and lays out the, the paths we had to take for that, that massive I setup. will say this, Matthew, if there's any doubters out there as to... Um, what we found that was in the archives, what artwork was there. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to tell you that Matt made sure that everything, everything was done by the book, that it was accounted for, double check, recheck, um, whatever. And uh, uh, I am so grateful that you 
paid that much attention to detail to protect this message, whatever it takes. And I know you have the same philosophy as I do about this message. Message comes first. Mm -hmm. You know, right. I've told my family, my friends, that if the message calls, I'm there. Right. And it has it has called me. I've, you know, came out of uh, three and a half years of retirement to do this. Mm -hmm. So when you gave me that surprise phone call in April, I was like, mm, ooh, no. <laughs> Well, I had to I had to ask God about that one, as as Doc said, write your uh, desires on your heart, your questions, at night before you go to sleep, and in the morning when you wake up, the answer will be there. And sure enough, I woke up 1:30 that morning, and bam, your name came right to the forefront. Mm. And the last thing I asked before I went to bed was, who am I going to pick and or choose or appoint to the board to to take my place and uh that was you so hmm. i'm just glad you accepted because if you would have said no then i would have went well god what'd you tell me that for mm. <laughs> but you're the right man for the job you, you bring Thank all you, the man. all the needed tools and you got a, a good tool chest to to work with a great foundation's been built which you help you know build yourself by being in here all those hours and standing on ladders and one little story we, we never did share, but I think we should tell it because it's kind of funny, is uh, John was the numbers guy, and he's going to bring that acumen to the, the whole operation. He's good with numbers, so he's really making needed changes, some tough changes that, that I probably wouldn't have been able to make myself because I, I lack that same acumen. But um, it's, a, it's an effort, a group effort here to make this thing continue on strong and succeed. But speaking of numbers, um, John had this huge pile of different papers that he scribbled down numbers on when we were hanging pictures around because you have to be precise. You have to have precise calculations, especially in groups, settings like the 12 Most Beautiful Children, the uh, Mark Twain Memorial uh, display, which is just a brilliant display. It's, it's musical, the mm -hmm. way it's laid out. And so he had these papers and with all these different measurements on it, well, I, I ended up <laughs> finding one of these papers laying on the on the floor, and I, I'm I'm just I'm in, in the science room. Now we're in the science room. in the science the room. I'm in cleanup mode, so you don't know how many bags of trash did I take to the dump? A lot, like 150 <laughs> full, huge 55-gallon uh, yes. bag filled to the brink with plastic trash, paper wrappings, mm. you know, all this stuff was packed very well in the warehouse. So we had a lot of trash and I picked this piece of paper and I didn't think anything of it. I threw it, crumbled it up, threw it right in the trash can and John goes. So anyway, so we're hanging like maybe the, the uh, I won't say it was the last um, uh, science painting. And so Matt, you know, he's taking the lead role. He's the guy that, that hangs it. So he hangs it, he, he gets the level on there, and we had our system down pat. So anyway, this particular painting was like an inch off. It was down too far uh, by an inch, over one way to an inch. And I'll uh, leave out the explicatives, but <laughs> Matt's like, what is going on here? And I said, well, Matt, I said, I had my, uh, my sheet over there on the table with the numbers, but I can't find it. <laughs> That's what I said. Uh, I think I threw it in the trash can. <laughs> so we found it. We got it out. We did the numbers, rehung it, and and everything uh, fit. But when you're dealing with, I mean, these rooms are 103 feet wide, right? right? Uh, I guess we length, have lengthwise. By, by uh, 29. 29. And, you know, the proportions and the number of paintings that we had to do. But... I'll tell you what made it easy uh, for all of us is the word balance. Yeah. Everything had to encompass that principle. Yes. And if, as long as you incorporate that, first of all, you got to know what it is that you're looking for. And uh, so we, we use that as our, our approach, and it worked out beautifully. Yeah. And we've gotten some great comments on that. Matter of fact, you know, we've had... Smithsonian just gave us a couple bumps, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, really cool. We... we uh participated in Smithsonian Museum Day and uh, the past Saturday had some people show up for that uh, about 10 different tours occurred that day mm -hmm. if I'm correct mm -hmm. and uh, 
turn some people on to the teachings and, and the uh, philosophy and such. And speaking of, some of the best compliments we got were from museum curators. And uh, three different museum curators came in on different occasions. Hmm. One was in tears. Wow. And she said, I've been a muse museum curator for 35 years, hmm. and this is absolutely perfect. She, that's how she described this museum. Now, John and I have never done any curation in our lives, minus paintings in our own home. Well, right? we never we never really worked together, per se. True that. I mean, we had our friendship yeah. and, you know, fellow students and, and so on. And for the record, I was Matt's assistant, <laughs> assistant and, to the president for now, several now years. Now I have uh, <laughs> joyfully taken that role on as uh, John's assistant to the president. So, so I might be working him more than he worked me. I'm not sure. but <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a lot of hours to catch up to your volunteer Ooh. record. You, you hold already this year the, the lead volunteer role. Mm. But I don't know if we can grant you another plaque or not. Maybe we'll get the maybe we'll get the public, the fans how, out how there. About to, a, how about a dinner on on me or something? All right. Maybe maybe we could do that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'd be open to that, brother. Good deal. Yes. Good deal. But yeah, three different museum curators. One in tears. The other two asked me personally, "Where did I go to school for museum curation?" And I said, "The University of Science and Philosophy." Good. Yeah. And uh, that, that truly was, again, having no experience, either one of us in museum curation, we really used the principles it found in the Russell Science and Philosophy, which revolve around balance. It's all about balance. And if you can put your heart and, and balance into everything you do, that's what you're going to create. The end result will I'm be I'm glad you, you said that, Matthew, because I was reflecting. Matthew, um, us working together, um, he had my trust and I, I had his. And so he reached out to me one day and said, John, he said, I don't trust anyone to do our sculpting restorations but you. He said, will you do that? And I'm like, wow. I said, uh, I've never done anything like this. But I said, yes, Matthew, I'll do that. And um, that evening, I go home. I do my uh, evening prayers. And I said, God, if if you will guide my hands through this project that Matt has assigned to me, I said, I will, I will do the labor. And uh, it was just amazing to, to work with these pieces that you know that Dr. Russell had worked on. And then when we uncovered some of his original, you know, tools that he worked with, with the mm -hmm. art, I mean, that just made it special. So there were times I just thought, hell, you know, Doc's, Doc's guiding my hands too, mm -hmm. you know, through this kind of thing. So that's the teachings being applied. Right. You know, you Wouldn't Leo have you guys do some restoration from time to time on sculptures at the palace as well back in the 70s? Um, I know, I think she had uh, Richard Walker restore something with... Yeah, uh, yeah with uh, George Washington yeah, bust. Right. Yes, because that was... Because uh, she was just getting ready to have that cast for the um, uh, bicentennial. Right. 17, and uh, so there was some touch-up so. needed on uh, one of the shoulders. I don't know if it was the left or right shoulder. And uh, let me tell you something. For Leo Russell to ask you to go in behind Dr. Russell <laughs> and touch something up, I mean, that was... Uh, yeah. But she trusted Richard. You know, they right. were Richard was an artist uh, in his own right, and he did a wonderful job. And uh, yeah. There were several things that needed touch-up, things that have been cracked in the original move from Swannanoa down to the warehouse, the... For instance, the sword on the uh, Four Freedoms, the wrist was broken, and so it needed to be, you know, reattached. And mm. just some of those things that, that were important to presentation and, and to restore to the original character. Well, how about your that, big surprise the day or night before the grand opening? Oh, when, when we came back to... Uh, yeah. to the the 12 foot tall Jesus yeah. statue in them and I didn't even notice it oh <laughs> and John says Matt I mean, it's the first thing you see when you walk into the museum is this huge oh. Christ uh, replica of the Christ of the Blue Ridge that that doc had cast for uh, I guess a backup piece mm -hmm. yeah. but he chose the other one for the uh, actual gardens mm -hmm. but that one was a backup piece and Fortunately, we're very glad to have it because the other one suffered an unfortunate accident being moved yeah. off the mountain yeah. and was uh, unrecoverable. So, 
yeah, I walked in and here's this grand statue of, of the Christ with the praying hands looking up toward heaven. And uh, that was an interesting uh, series of events that I didn't notice it for a second and then suddenly noticed it. And the first thing I said was, how the hell did you get that up there without breaking it? <laughs> my, well, my big concern was always make sure we break nothing. We cannot yes. have one piece be broken. Safe and security. And, so, and sure enough, we, we did it. So my yeah. philosophy was, so it took me a little over a thousand hours to put this piece back together. And I <laughs> thought, well, I'm going to ask Matt for forgiveness instead of permission. <laughs> That's what you told the staff. Yeah, I told the staff too. I Let's said, just oh, just it. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of ask for permission, we'll ask for forgiveness. <laughs> but, you know, once it was all said and done, what, a, what an incredible homecoming. And uh, that was a wonderful grand evening. opening we had. Oh. The catering, uh, Franklin just did a fantastic job. There are so many people that contributed. Our board of directors has been really behind this whole effort. I want to give a personal thanks to them too because it's not often that you get a board that that really supports you and, and lets you run with a vision and, and especially Mr. William C. Cranwell oh my goodness. and his wife yes. Ellen. Their, their backing in this was so hugely important and as he liked to say, you know, we all bring something to the table to make this what it truly is today. And well, without him yeah, we're not sitting here today. Right. I'm, I'm not a, I mean, I, I'm okay in saying that, mm -hmm. you know, and his, yeah. his efforts have been monumental. So uh, big to kudos work. to you, Bill and Ellen and, yes. and family and uh, all our board of directors. You all know who you are. And uh, Michael Hudak, of course, gave me the chance to, to sit yes. in the captain's chair. Started yeah. 2016, January 1st. And I didn't look back. It was I knew what I had to do and what had to be done, and some way, somehow, we put it out there. And I held that thought, as you like to say, when, when oh, yeah. I think that's a demarcation line between mediocrity and genius. Is mediocrity gets the same genius type thoughts, they just don't hold it long enough to build a body for it, mm -hmm. and so it it never materializes. It never manifests, and. One thing you said to me a long time ago, the difference between mediocrity and genius is that genius holds thoughts and builds bodies for them. And that always stuck with me. In fact, yes. I use it in podcasts and interviews as a talking point because it's very important. And you know, we, we don't often talk about the process of creation enough in, in... Well, let's do this along those lines, if, if I may. Uh, guys, Matthew, when he uh, discovered the Russells, now I'm just kind of trying to put it in, in my words here. Sure. Um, Matt discovered the, the secret of light, and that began his journey um, w with the university. And I believe as his journey unfolded, you received pretty much a seven-year plan. 2015, February 2nd at 530 in the morning. Right. 15 and seconds. So Matt was aware of his mission, and he stuck to it, executed it, and I mean right right to the T, never questioned it, and just let it unfold as it was dictated to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here we are moving forward. You knew when the seven years was up, you kind of picked the time. You said, okay, now I'm going to move on to my next project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually got it done. and in just under six. Awesome. But, you know, I'm, I'm still serving on the board of directors, which I'm honored to do, and uh, as your webmaster now. So, and by the your, way, your he's IT not, guy. He's your, not bad. He's not your, bad as a webmaster, okay? <laughs> and your network administrator, <laughs> and your computer and technical support guy. Whoosh. Whoosh. But, uh, yeah, and speaking of rooms, we were talking about rooms. Is This is room... Uh, for the meeting room, the Mark Twain executive conference mm -hmm. room, if you will, and this bookshelf, which is pretty large, maybe I can pan a picture of it, uh, edit that in here when I go to the editing process, but uh, this shelf was conceived at uh, about three in the morning. I woke up and the still small voice was very loud that morning and it just kept repeating, what kind of a university doesn't have a library? over and over mm. until I was more fully awake and I said 
so God, you want me to build a bookcase? And it was sort of almost like Lord of the Rings seriousness. Mm. Build me a bookcase worthy of Walter Russell. Mm. And so that's where this bookcase came from, that idea. So we had our, our boy Tracy come down from yeah. the Northern Neck and he, he and Kurt whipped this out, I think, in one day. And yes. And uh, we did the staining and the shelf hanging and, and uh, John got all that done, headed that up. So the next time I came in, I saw this beautiful, and, and our lovely Cindy Lewis shipping yes. manager for USP did all the book decorating, laying out you know the different displays on the shelves. And uh, you'll see, uh, if I pan in the edit, uh, Walter Russell's tennis racket, his ice skates and some other you know, paraphernalia and stuff like that from from the palace that uh, is adorning the shelves. Very beautiful, very very nice set to have in Absolutely. a university. A, a good book station is, is certainly a well well placed addition. You know, because people always ask that question. You know, go, oh, I wonder what the Russells read. I wonder yeah. what they. And I do know this, living with um, Mrs. Russell for for two years. By her bedside, on her nightstand, was the complete collection of Cahil Gibran, mm -hmm. and uh, he was one of her favorites. Yeah. And uh, she all, often told me that she felt he was borderline illuminate, mm -hmm. that he was that, that close. And uh, so I'm glad that we have those in, in our library. Yeah, you know? definitely. Yeah. Some signed books that uh, Walter even left notes in and, you mm -hmm. know, treasured himself. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of great things that are occurring here at the university and the transition is going very well. Uh, a few more things uh, to unpack is that we've got a new operations manager. Uh, Jim Porter stepped down and we've welcomed Jeremy Boyer into the position. He's a longtime student, mm -hmm. at least uh, I'd say nearly a decade. Uh, since he first heard me on a podcast. It's interesting how a lot of people have, have come to this from podcasts that I've mm. been on and stuff like that. It's yeah. it's sort of the new media the, and a new medium of communication, and it's something that I'll, I'll continue to do and help spread this work because it's so inspiring. And especially in times like this, we can use a good shot of inspiration, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Speaking of inspiration... Matthew, I'll, I'll never forget, you know, um, one of Leo's greatest joys was reading mail, getting mail and opening mm -hmm. letters and reading what people would say. Right. And this message is not the easiest thing to push out here to the world mm -hmm. because I think we crunched the numbers the other day and I think we're trying to reach out to point zero 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 one percent of the population that would right. be receptive right. you know to this message and uh, uh, it, it's an uphill battle and it, it wears you down mm -hmm. and it wore Leo down you know there was just times she's like you know I just like to fold it up and say the heck with it you right. know? but those letters would bring her such such yeah. joy and inspiration and the other day we got one from a, a lady and uh, I apologize, I can't think of her name right now, but it was so inspiring to me, and, and I saved it. Matt's always on me about deleting my emails, but this one I haven't deleted. It's the Well, just <laughs> reading them first, make sure you read your inbox, and then when you're done reading them, file them away so you don't end so up So that's with my measurement 5, of, a, of my presidency. Matt, he checks out, he goes, oh, he says, how many emails have you got on there? Okay. So, but anyway, this lady said the most beautiful uh, thing. She, she said, I don't know, you know, who's involved at the university and who's in charge, but I just want to say that uh, this material and the books um, literally changed her life and inspire her daily and just gave us an eternal thanks. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, just yeah. that little something, you know, it means everything. The headaches and everything else that come naturally with running any business, really, uh, the tediousness of management, it makes it all worth it. Yes, it? it does. Yes, you know, it that's, does. That's a great way to say it. I've, I've been on the rope myself a few times. I've got to admit, it's not easy to, to run an organization and, and to do it in a way that you can constantly re-inspire yourself to, to keep doing and putting your best foot forward. And it's like 
at the low times, there would come an email from the, the contact form on the website, philosophy.org, and man, just at the perfect time, like you said, somebody gives a compliment, says thanks for what you guys do, everything mm -hmm. you're doing there. It's, it is truly life-changing material. I mean, and one of the points I like to bring up in, in interviews is just that, uh, you know, a large portion of our student body are former university students who have graduated from university all over the world. And they like to say that they were looking for this kind of teaching in their university but didn't get it. So they had to continue their search. And yes. So we get a lot of academics that, that come to this work and they're like, this is what I was looking for. This is why I joined this university mm -hmm. here. I was hoping I would learn what you guys have to offer here. So as a unique university, I would say that we're one of the only ones in the world that really teach the science of man, which is the science of mind and the science Self. of his soul. Yes, self-development versus group development. Right, it's, it's more centered around the individual. Yes. Right, because yeah. indiv a strong individual who's got a good mental faculty is a better addition to any group or any, yes. you know, construct than he would be if he was underdeveloped, let's say. So that's there's a lot of emphasis on oh, yeah. individual development and, and achievement here. Because any group, any institution is only as strong as its weakest link. Right. You know, and that's why, um, you know, even though um, the Russells did and, you know, we offer our, our home study, you know, but it is an individual study, an right. individual growth. You proceed at your own pace you know, and just take it a little bit at a time. Right, and they even emphasize uh, the Russells that you should study it alone by yourself in mm -hmm. your, your private quarters, as if to emphasize that you and God are basically studying together. I would like and, to uh, say um, that one of the, uh, I won't say that it's, a, it's one of our biggest challenges, but it's something that Matthew and I um, are trying to do is um, we're trying to get this message digitized and move it move it forward for the next generation and right. our home study course has been untouched for well, since, since 1970 yeah for the third edition now we had the the change to fourth edition which we changed back past, yes past administration but um, we're simply honoring the, the wishes of the Russells. They had left the message to future generations to mm. not touch anything, change nothing. Exactly. Other than a word correction or something like that. So, yeah, we are looking at reformatting the uh, Home Study Course 3rd Edition into a four-volume set, mm. which is more of a collector's edition. Yeah. Special edition, let's call it. Yes. And uh, that would be a great way to present it, you know, moving forward. Yes. In a... In a nice leather bound case and leather bound cover. I'm covers. excited about yeah. that. So uh, yeah, now it's going to take us a little while, so don't get too, too anxious. <laughs> I would say uh, maybe mid, mid year, mid year next year. Yeah. yeah. 2022. Yeah. That'd yeah. be great. So, uh, and yeah, definitely, uh, you know, there's just so much good, good things happening in the background um, with, with other projects as well. So there's a lot to, to look forward to in, in the areas to come. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, uh, I call it the code, mm -hmm. that Walter Russell's code has been broken and soon to be released, right? And what, Some, what code is that? Well, let's see, how can I describe that code? Let's just call it a science code. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a, a lot of interesting things happening on, on fronts that uh, yes. yeah, we'll talk about down the road. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyways, uh, it's a pleasure to, to welcome you to Thank the you, university Matthew. and introduce you to the student body. Uh, John does also have a couple of presentations uh, on his belt that he uh, did in 2016 at the homecoming, which you can find at philosophy.org forward slash videos. Click on homecoming 2016, and you gave a presentation at that one, which mm -hmm. occurred at the guest house, was held there. And uh, in 2017, you did one at the Wayne Theater for our 2017 homecoming. So you're no stranger to the uh, 
happenings here at the university. Why don't you give us a little uh, foresight as to where you're trying to take this? What What is your vision for the university, your sort of your mission statement, if you will, for the years to come? For us, for me, it's um, the preservation, if you will, of this message. Mm -hmm. It has to be pure, untouched, and, you know, we've already reached out to the world. You know, we are an international institution, and we, we just want to uh, broaden that. We want to reach as many people as, as possible, uh, and it's critical. It, it's critical for us to, um, I hate to use the word modernize, but, you know, it's a, it's a digital tech world, mm -hmm. you know, and we're there. You know, that's your expertise. You've done a great job of, you know, handing me something that um, is, is turnkey. It's a well-oiled machine. It is. But we have to keep improving, keep moving right. it forward. And, you know, it has its challenges, but we're, we're here to meet those. And that's, that's my goal for this, for this university. Very good. And I will encourage everyone, get yourself a home study course. Uh, right now it's running at, what, $250? And most universities, for their curriculum, you can't even get a single textbook for under 400. So, <laughs> yeah, we're and, talking about a But deal. what you're going to take from this $250 investment is a lifetime of knowledge, something that you cannot get anywhere. You don't have to go into debt for 30 years to get it. Mm -mm. You can leave it to your loved ones, you know, encourage them to get one for themselves. But pretty much for the price of a, of a good meal for four people, you know, a good night out, mm. $250 is a relatively small price. And I think you can acquire all these teachings, every book we sell, for $1,500 or less. So we're going to be wor working on some book sets and things mm -hmm. of that nature to come yes. on the website for the store. Uh, we encourage everyone to, uh, again, get your get yourself a home study course. There's no no better investment in terms of a course on unfolding uh, the inner genius that we all possess that lays dormant in some that is beginning to crack in others to the surface and uh, I mean it's you're really investing in yourself to, to say the least but uh, any final thoughts John before we wrap up I do I wanted to encourage everyone to listen to that silent voice mm. within that is your creator talking to you 24 7 nonstop. And it's uh, how many of us take the time to listen to that inner voice because it will guide you. And so listen to it, adhere to it, follow through with it, and just see how wonderful your life will end up being by paying attention to that inner voice. So. Well said. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, Appreciate sir. Appreciate it. All right, Matthew. All right. And for you folks uh, to stay up to date on current events, as this is my last interview, that makes nine. I, I would have loved to do more, but uh, we were too busy working to get things going. We got the nine octaves, so, so you might as well shut got, it down at nine. <laughs> I may say to former staff and, and folks interested, maybe you guys can carry interviews on in, in a different format. But, you know, there's always uh, more projects, more kinds of uh, video and, and homecoming things you guys can do as well. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll continue to be part of that as, as things unfold. And like I said, I'm happy to stay on the board and and kind of watch this thing. Well, I don't plan on signing your release papers anytime <laughs> soon. So, <laughs> But yeah, folks, if you want to stay up to date, uh, visit philosophy.org forward slash news. There's a newsletter that goes out every, every uh, month, generally within the first week of the month. Uh, there's a sale every month. Uh, you can find more information at philosophy.org forward slash news on events that are coming up. We thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate all the support on a personal note. Everyone that sent letters of support uh, and thanks, uh, especially at my departure. I, I was in tears a couple times at some of the incredible, even text messages I got from, from some of you students and the student body out there. and and friends and, and relatives and, and all folks. It, it's just been a tremendous honor to uh, serve in this capacity. And, and I know for a fact in my heart that I'm leaving this to the best qualified person there is to, to take over the reins for this great institution. So with that, 
And uh, without further ado, thank you very much. And we'll see you uh, down the road. Absolutely. The concept of something you desire to do, you have the desire to do and know what you want to do in the way you form a concept. And it, it's, it is out of desire that the concept springs. The whole idea of creation is in everyone, all of it, the completion of the whole thing is in everyone, Mind. And it is there, not only all of it, but all of the man's destiny of its unfolding is there in the very beginning of the formation of a body. Because the concept of the Creator must unfold through the destiny of, of the creation itself to the very end. It's there. Now we, being universal, being mind, there being only one mind, we have within us the knowing of the whole idea of creation.